the nominee of the Democratic Party is going to be either Joe Biden or Bernie Sanders. Tell me a reason if I am a young woman watching the outcome of this race with this historic number of female candidates who are so accomplished from such diverse backgrounds, for this only to end up in the hands of Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden, how do you not look at that and say, we have taken steps backwards? Oh, you should feel pissed. I think there is real disappointment and frustration that women are rightfully feeling right now. Let me ask you as a man, Sorry. because as I talk to many, many men, many enlightened men, many not so enlightened men, and they say, you know why, you know why Amy Klobuchar and Kamala Harris and Kirsten Gillibrand are not the nominee? Because they ran bad campaigns. That is totally mind-blowing and maddening. Because you have to do so many things that feel contradictory in a campaign when you are a woman to meet the double standard. Balancing, I am tough and I was a prosecutor with also I am a mom, I am disarming, here is my biography, I am very accomplished but not too accomplished, don't be afraid. Not too ambitious but ambitious enough to be president, it's like what the hell are you And don't to do? speak too loud right. <laughs> or too soft. However many data points you have in terms of competence and accomplishments, it still comes back to electability, which is just like this this mythic kind of intangible. Or also the only people to lose the presidency on behalf of the Democratic Party before Hillary Clinton are white men. And it's not like Al Gore lost and John Kerry lost and we were like, oh God, can we possibly nominate another white man? It's so risky. Right. We've no. Done a lot of Instead that. we were like, I'll take another order of that, please. <laughs> When it comes to like the ultimate leadership position, we have automatically default to men. Like that is that that is the model that is in our heads, and it's so powerful. But if Biden wins, it's hard to imagine that the the narrative changes. I think Joe Biden's part of his his staying power is he's been around. He's been People around. know him. We know Joe. And we love Joe. You know, and we and he's had more experience than any other candidate. But he also had more opportunities for experience. He had opportunities for experience that Kamala or Amy or Kirsten or Elizabeth couldn't have. I mean, he was elected senator in his twenties. It was not a thing that a woman could be a senator in her twenties in 1973. Sort of, there's a generational question too. That does AOC, when she runs for president, when, when she's 50, she's is she a known entity the way Bernie Sanders is a known entity? 2018 midterms were powered by female candidacies. Is the road easier for the women who are now involved in politics at much younger ages than this current crop of female candidates was? Something that I also get inspired by is just how many young girls were moved by Kirsten's campaign. You know, like the, the Pinky Promise is, is Elizabeth Warren's version of that, but all of us had that. Like there are little girls who were so excited to go with their parents to vote for Elizabeth Warren on Super Tuesday. Yeah, and there are little boys too that are going to grow up thinking like, of course there are women candidates That's in the field. a really good point, yeah. yeah. This is like, this has been a long road. We've had the vote for women for a hundred years. So like, we're a long, we're in the long game business. And when, when we elect a woman president, it will be because of Amy and Kirsten and Kamala and Elizabeth. Hillary. And Shirley and Ann Richards, and it will be because of Barbara Mikulski and others. It's like there's been a team of women trying to push this boulder up the hill for a very, very long time. And that's why I want women to be like, oh, I know. It's one more push to get that boulder up that hill.